Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Lisa Dietrich, pastor here at Fredsville. If you're a guest with us this morning, we certainly welcome you to all the ministries we have to offer. Um, I do have a number of announcements and almost as many clipboards to pass this morning. Um, so first off is a cookie sign-up sheet um, for cookies in January for New Aldea. Carol, I'm going to start everything with you, hon. Um, the second one that's going to come around, we're looking for volunteers to work the clothing closet. So if you can help with, um, with that in particular um, Wednesday, the, wait, what is today's date? Yeah, this coming Wednesday, the 20th. Wow, Christmas is catching up with your pastor too. Um, so this Wednesday in particular, we need some help, if you can help with that. And then um, December volunteers, Sue has highlighted in green on the green paper what we really need and what we really desperately need are ushers for Christmas Eve. So please sign up for that. And then the January volunteers, and I know it can feel early, but the newsletter um, deadline was Friday already, so we can get it done with all of our year-end stuff. So if you can help fill out any of those slots while we put the last of the newsletter together tomorrow morning, that would be great. Um, most of you, those of you who knew uh, Pastor Solberg, Marsha passed away last week. There is a card in the kitchen. If you would like to sign that card for Pastor Solberg, we invite you and encourage you to do that. Um, Fellowship hour this morning will be in the gathering space, so cookie, coffee, juice, water, all that's going to be out in the gathering space. And at the end of worship this morning, we will also dance around the Christmas tree, a Danish tradition. So um, make sure right after worship, we'll just greet each other out there and we'll begin with dancing around the tree. Um, high school kids and more than high school kids, junior high kids, but even kids of all ages, adults, we need help wrapping the Bremwood gifts. So if you would go into the conference room, um, Trish Weikers will help us with all that. The gifts um, will be, are all ready to go, but we need help getting those wrapped so that those can be taken up there um, this afternoon. And then in the back of the sanctuary, there's a table that is filled with cookie plates. And those are plates to go to some of our shut-ins here at Fredsville. Um, so if you wouldn't mind taking a look at some of those, and if you're going to see any of those people, or if there's somebody there, boy, I haven't seen them in a while, and I'd love to visit them, I encourage you to take um, a plate and go and, and do that. Um, I will see almost all of those people but it means more when you all go to visit. They know I'm coming, and they know that I'm gonna come this time of year, but for them to have a visit from one of you means absolutely the world. So I encourage you um, to do that and to bring a little Christmas cheer to them. Are there any other announcements at this time? All right, then if you would join me in standing and we'll begin with the lighting of the Advent wreath. We light the third candle for God's gift of peace. Soon we will celebrate the birth of our Savior and Lord, the Prince of Peace. of peace, we often create quarrels and strife. Forgive us, Prince of Peace, and rule in our hearts. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchman they lift up their voice, together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. 
through the death and the resurrection of our Savior, our sins are forgiven and we have peace with God. The angels sang of peace the night our Lord was born. We too have a message of peace for the world. the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in sharing a sign of God's peace with one another this morning by bumping elbows, please. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You. you may be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Spoken God, your word is life. Teach us to use it wisely and powerfully for the fulfilling of your will on earth. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
Today's scripture is Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 11. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me, listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to see peoples, a leader a com and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall, the, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Thank you, Kara. I haven't forgotten what part of the service we're in. I'm sure you're wondering why I did that now. And I'm hoping by the time I get done, it'll make sense. How many of you like this time of year, the Christmas time? Raise your hand. Good, excellent. How many of you dread this time of year? Raise your hand. It's okay. Those of you who like this time of year, and even those maybe who dread this time of year, there may be some things that you do enjoy. What are some things that you look forward to with this time of year? Spending time with family. Spending time with family. All right, what else? Presents. All right, there's somebody hoping big. All right, presents. All right, what else? At least you're honest, thank goodness, you know. What else are you looking forward to? What was that? Communion? Oh, the music, absolutely, absolutely. So as in the, um, any of the music or are there particular songs? All of it, look at the two of you. They're gonna start living together. Jim, look out, Nancy, look out. But yeah, all that music, right? All that beautiful music. What else, Carrie, you were gonna say something that you look forward to. Okay, so the traditions of dancing around the tree, the Christmas Eve service. I, how many of you lighting the candles? You've got to light candles on Christmas Eve for you. That that's kind of your family tradition, you know, or that we have to do that here at worship. What other things do you look forward to? Food. Who said food? <laughs> Carlene said food. That a girl. What did you say? The memories. Absolutely. The memories that we have. Um, I think about all the memories that I have as a child um, 
Christmas Eve was always a big time for our family. And my grandfather, um, true story, looks exactly like Don Knotts, or did, and he was stopped repeatedly on the street asking for his autograph. And he was just as nervous and nilly as Don Knotts was as well. And he was too small to be in World War II. You see, he was only four foot 10 and he weighed 85 pounds. And that was, as my grandmother said, soaking wet with chains on. So you get where Isabel and I get our lack of height from now, right? And he could sing like nobody's business. He could sing um, tenor to soprano, and it was phenomenal. And so when you say music, we didn't get to open gifts until we all sat as a family, and my entire family is blessed with music. Not Scott's side, my side. And uh, we would sing for an hour, and Grandpa had taught himself guitar. And so Grandpa would play, and we would sing all the Christmas carols. And of course, that was after we'd already sang them all at worship. Those memories are important, aren't they? What else do you look forward to at this time of year? Yeah, Jody. I enjoy hearing the story of the birth of Jesus. Okay, so hearing that whole story of how this all came to be and how God came to earth and the person in this tiny, innocent baby child. What else? Anything else that you look forward to? Christmas break. Christmas break. Hey, teachers, raise your hand. Woot, woot, woot. Christmas break. Amen, sister. What else? Yeah. Okay, coming to church and worship. These are all wonderful things. Yeah, Christy, you were going to say something? Okay, I thought I saw a hand move. All right. Um, but it, these are all wonderful things that just really warm our hearts, don't they? They're things that um, really can lift us up, and it's part of that, that whole romanticism, if you will, of the entire season. Those of you who do not care for this time of year, tell me why. What is it that you don't like, or you dread, or you regret, or you prefer never happen during this time of year? Tell me. The chaos. Tim, be more specific. Is it just Nancy running around with her head chopped off, or is that it? Okay, marriage counseling, my office tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. All right, the chaos of it all. But isn't that true? I mean, we just get so wrapped up in it all. What else do you dread? Sue? Okay, the commercialism. And what do you mean by that? Be a little more specific. Okay. Right. Bye, bye, bye. Bigger, bigger, bigger. I can't go unless I've got something that I can give to somebody. Every, it just gets overwhelming. What else? I wish I could say Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays. Okay. So that whole thing of what do I say? Can I say Merry Christmas? Do I have to say Happy Holidays? Does Happy Holidays, if I say Merry Christmas, does that negate my own religion? Does it offend somebody else? Or, or can they understand that's who I am? And then you get all wrapped up in that. Now you don't know what to say. And so you just don't even look at each other anymore when you shop, right? You just kind of bypass each other. All right, what else do you not look forward to? Working till 2 a.m. Whether it's at a store, how many of you like would or have a child or a grandchild that works retail this time of year? Your whole holiday is planned around that because we all are out there doing last minute shopping and somebody's got to keep those stores open. <laughs> or whether it's working till 2 a.m practicing a sermon over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then when it comes time to delivering it, you leave half of it out anyway. What else do you regret or dread, Kara? The what? Yes, yes. The financial burden that this season can cause and whether or not you can even do what feels like is expected, right? I would say another thing that makes this time of season difficult is often, let's be honest, I'll say it, the family drama. <laughs> Y'all got it. We do too. How many of you go, and, and be honest, reminder, you are sitting in the sanctuary. This is direct link to a lightning bolt. Come down and burn your biscuits if you lie in this place. How many of you honestly think, you don't tell me the name. Please don't tell me the name. This is being video recorded. 
How many of you think, oh, I just really hope that one person isn't there this year? Raise your hand. Oh, come on. You're all chuckling, so I know you got them. Y'all got them. We all got them. And if you're not raising your hand, it might be you they're hoping isn't there. But family drama comes out like crazy at this time of year and every holiday gathering. How many of you are also stressed by, I don't know how to get to moms and grandmas and his mom and his grandmas, and then we want to have family time together because we're a new young family and we're trying to build our own traditions with our own new babies and we're trying to figure it out. And then if there's a divorced family, now all of a sudden you've got four more people you have to get to and how do you do it all? And somebody's going to be upset and angry and disappointed because we didn't get there. If that's you, raise your hand. Your kids are lying to you. Because we all have felt that. How many remember being in that stage? Yeah. And trying to figure it out. Isaiah this morning comes at a beautiful time. A time where those folks were in exile. The Israelites were in exile. And they're at near the end of their time in exile. And things were not good for them. And we laugh about some of this stuff. But the truth is some of what we talked about is very real. There is deep sadness in your pastor's heart that I know that I won't have Christmas with my mother because it's better I not show up because if I do, my brother won't and that causes her great pain. So I celebrate with my mother at a different time. These family things are real and true and they hurt. And there are families that sit here in our midst this morning that don't know that this might not be the last Christmas they have with somebody. Isaiah is called the book of comfort. It's the book that comes to these people in exile when they are truly starving. It starts with this morning, Kara read, Ho, oh, come to me, all of you who are hungry, who have no bread, who have no money, come and buy bread. Well, how do you do that when you don't have the money? How do you buy the presents when you don't have the money? How do you meet the expectations when there is no more time? How is it that you do all those things and you can feel so wrapped up in it that you lost sight? And that's exactly the point of Isaiah is that we lose sight. Isaiah says, quit chasing after the bread that doesn't sustain the things that don't matter. And come to me. Comfort, comfort my people, I will give you rest. Know that in me there is peace. Know that in me there is hope. And more than a hope that is fleeting or passing, but a hope that will sustain. Past all the family drama, past the light bulbs on the tree that forgot how to shine and sparkle, past the tinsel that's running around the house in a cat's mouth and you're running after it. You should see our house. It all passes. And in the midst of all that craziness, and even in the midst of all the deep hurt and brokenness, and the sorrow of knowing this might be a last Christmas, is an invitation from God to come and feast. Come and eat the bread that gives you life.
will gather one week from today in the evening, and you're going to hear the story again, Jody. We're going to light the candles. We're going to sing all the songs. All of them. Don't plan dinner early. And we're going to feast again, week after week after week. The invitation still comes. May this then be your invitation to God too. Come. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. the choir to come forward as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray. Your ways are indeed not our ways, dear Lord, and yet we so often prefer our own. Your vision of a radical deliverance for all is sometimes more than we can comprehend, and perhaps even more than we are willing to accept. Turn our hearts to you again and give us your own eyes to see the world which you have made. Lord, in your mercy. We await your coming, O Lord, not only in this season of Advent, but also your return to restore your creation to yourself. Inspire us to proclaim your promises to all who need to hear them. Lord, in your mercy. The water that you give can quench thirst for eternity. Give us this life-giving refreshment when we thirst for healing, wholeness, and restoration. Offer your cup of living water to all who have needs and to whom we name before you this morning. We lift especially Phyllis, Alma, Gerald, Lillian, Cole, Jim, Neil, Bob, and all others we name in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, you are all powerful, and yet you incline your ear to our smallest concerns. God of compassion, receive our prayers and bless our journey as we walk in your ways. Amen. We continue our worship with the collecting of the offering. Rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. In Bethlehem in June, this blessed babe was born and laid within a manger upon this blessed morn to which his mother mary did nothing take in scorn oh tidings of comfort and joy comfort and joy oh tidings of comfort and joy From God our Heavenly Father a blessed angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name oh tidings of comfort and joy comfort and joy oh tidings of comfort and joy The shepherds at those tidings rejoiced much in mind and left their flocks of feeding in tempest, storm, and wind and went to Bethlehem Street with the Son of God to find. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Please stand. 